Hi. On the GPUG Collaborate site, someone was asking about how they can work on building a Excel age trial balance for payables that matches the data that's in the GP. Well, my fellow MVP and friend Victoria Uden has made that task a lot easier for you. So here's Victor Victoria Uden's website. I'll put a link to it on there. And uh, on her blog, she will share a lot of views. And this is one of the views she shared where it automatically does an aging and it's in detail. So it's very simple to use. And let's go through the process now of, of utilizing it. So what I'm going to do is just highlight all of her code. And that's everything with the lines that are numbered. And I'll copy it. And now in SQL Server Management Studio, I'm connected to my database here. I'm going to click on New Query and paste this in to the new query. Now I will up here want to make sure that I select the right company. So we'll select the company ID. And you'll know which company this is because if you go to uh, Tools, Setup, Company, and Company, you'll see the company ID right here. So you may want to do it for all of your companies if you have more than one. All right, so once we have the company selected and the code pasted in, click on Execute, and then we should receive the command that it's been completed successfully. And if I scroll to the top, you can see it's going to create a view called View underscore Current Payables Aging Detail. This is the name of this fake virtual table we're going to be looking for. So this is what's going to guide us. And I'm using Excel 2013, but you could use Excel 2010 as well. And what we're going to do is go up to Data, choose from other sources. Now there are a variety of ways we can access this information. Right now, um, actually I want to make this reusable code so that I could just refresh the report over again. I don't have to actually go and re-query the data each time. So I'll choose from Data Connection Wizard. I will choose Microsoft SQL Server. I'll put in my server name. And I'm going to log in. Now I happen to be logging in as SA. Might be easier the first time you build it if you do that. So put in the company name again. And I'm looking now for that view current table again. So I'm going to scroll to the V's. Oops, so all the tables are at the bottom and the views are at the top. So let me find where the Z from the views meets the A from the tables. Okay, and here it is. View current tables aging detail. And I'll click on next and finish. And I get asked how I want to see the data. I want to see it in a just a table or I could do a pivot table report. So actually let's do a pivot table report and that way we can um, clean it up a little bit. Um, it's otherwise just make it look a little more like a payables report. The data is beautifully, beautifully done. She's beautifully executed it. So we'll put in the vendor name in the rows and now we see all the vendor names. And what we're going to do in the values is we'll put in current 30 to 60 60 to 90 and 90 and over. Now you can edit the views so that you can adjust the dates the way you need to you see fit. Now take the time under values to choose value field setting and number for, uh, format and set them to currency and then make sure they're set to sum here. If you do it here then you won't have to reformat the columns every time you run the report. It will restore how you want to see this. So again, currency, and I like to see my um, negative numbers as red and with brackets around, or parentheses around them. And make sure it's set to sum, not to count. If it's set to count, then it's just going to count the records, and we don't want it to do that. So this shows us what is left unpaid, right? So we may want to see the document amount as well. So let's drag that down and let's put it before sum of current and set that format. 
Great. Now let's come in and put document number under vendor name. And now we can see the document number and the amounts that are rolling forward. We may also want to put in the document type. And I'm going to put it between, um, I squeezed it in here between vendor name and document number. So it's listed right along here. So I can see invoice and I can collapse all the invoices if I want. Or I can just uh, look at payments this way, collapse all the payments, look at invoices, and so forth. I could also come through under Analyze and put a slicer and just look at vendor class if I want. So I can come in now and say, oh, I want to see just vendors that are in the USA um, US-C class. Or again, to look at all of them, I can put it right here. Then you could even put a graph on here if you want. So under Pivot Tools, Analyze, I'll do a pivot chart. And we'll leave it set to column. Now, it's pretty junky right now, but you'll notice that it's dynamic. So if I, again, if I come back and select just that um, vendor class, it's a little easier to read. Also, if I collapse all of the invoices, it becomes still yet easier to read. And if I collapse all of my vendors, it's still yet easier to read. This is a great gift that Victoria has given us, and I hope today's session helps you utilize it a little bit better.